when you are sad, know that this need not be. Depression comes from a sense of being deprived of something you want and do not have. Remember that you're deprived of nothing except by your own decisions. And then decide otherwise. When you're anxious, realize that anxiety comes from the capriciousness of the ego. And no, this need not be. You can be as vigilant against the ego's dictates as for them. That, and they would be smart to be vigilant against the ego's dictates instead of for them, instead of defending something. When you feel guilty, remember that the ego has indeed violated the laws of God, but you have not. You are not your ego. Leave the sins of the ego to me. That is what atonement is for. But until you change your mind about those whom your ego has hurt, the atonement cannot release you. While you feel guilty, your ego is in command because only the ego can experience guilt. This need not be. Watch your mind for the temptations of the ego and do not be deceived by it. It offers you nothing. When you have given up this voluntary dispiriting, you will see how your mind can focus and rise above fatigue and heal. Yet you are not sufficiently vigilant against the demands of the ego to disengage yourself. This need not be. You need to be more vigilant against the demands of the ego. That's what Jesus says here. When you've given up this voluntary dispiriting, you will see how your mind can focus and rise above fatigue and heal. The habit of engaging with God and his creations is easily made if you actively refuse to let your mind slip away. If you actively refuse to let your mind slip away, you can feel it. If you made a decision in your mind to actively refuse it to slip away, you can engage in the habit of engaging with God and his creation. This is very helpful. the mind likes to slip away by anything, by a little gust of wind, it will slip away by what some, someone says or does. Well, you don't have to let it slip away. The problem is not one of concentration. It is the belief that no one, including yourself, is worth consistent effort. Did you hear that? We have to read it again. So the problem is not a problem of, of con concentration. It's not that your con concentration falters. It is the belief that no one, including yourself, is worth consistent effort. And no one, including yourself, is worth consistent effort. What if you would offer consistent effort to somebody? Or to yourself? The consistent effort of right-mindedness. What a gift. What a gift. <laughs> the 
side with me consistently against this deception and do not permit this shabby belief to pull you back. The disheartened are useless to themselves and to me, but only the ego can be disheartened. Glorious. Have you really considered how many opportunities you have had to gladden yourself and how many of them you have refused? There is no limit to the power of the Son of God, but he can limit the expression of his power as much as he chooses. There is no limit to the power of the Son of God. But he can limit the expression as much as he chooses. Yeah, powerful mind. Your mind and mine can unite. <clears throat> your mind and mine can unite in shining your ego away, releasing the strength of God into everything you think and do. Releasing the strength of God into everything you think and do. This is by uniting your mind with spirit, with Jesus Christ, the mind of Jesus Christ. Do not settle for anything less than this. Do not settle for anything less than this and refuse to accept anything but this as your goal. Watch your mind carefully for any beliefs that hinder its accomplishment. Watch for any beliefs that hinder its accomplishment and step away from them. Judge how well you have done this by your own feelings. For this is the one right use of judgment. So it's easy to know if you've done this. You we'll just check in with your feelings. And if you don't feel great, you haven't done this. But then you can just do this. <laughs> Judgment, like any other defense, can be used to attack or protect, to hurt or to heal. The ego should be brought to judgment and found wanting there. Without your own allegiance, protection and love, the ego cannot exist. Without your own allegiance, protection and love for it, it cannot exist. Let it be judged truly, and you must withdraw allegiance, protection, and love from it. Yeah, that's pretty logical. I'll let you read the rest yourselves. It's beautiful. So I read again from Jesus. As a loving brother, I am deeply concerned with your mind and urge you to follow my example as you look at yourself and at your brother and see in both the glorious creations of a glorious father. So maybe we spent about 10 minutes reading this. And I wonder if the mind slipped away. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's this need not be. Also in um, chapter four, part four. So just to see how how much mind watching is required here on planet Earth. David calls it distraction will. It is distraction will. That's why this vigilance, this focus. is needed. And when you've slipped away is when you've had an attack thought, is when you have judged somebody as 
you know, not worthy of consistent effort, not worthy of being the son of God he or she is. So this is all we need to focus on. We don't have to cook food. We don't have to clean and wash. We, we have to only focus on this. And then we can allow, you know, inspiration to come from that. But this needs to be the highest focus, the forefront in the mind. That's why we can call the rest just the backdrop. It is just a backdrop for being right-minded. And he's saying, you know, all are called, but few choose to listen. And then there is a few who choose to listen sooner rather than later. <laughs> so this idea of choice, Jesus does talk quite a bit about it. So to realize there has been a choice for wrong-mindedness, there has been choice to not listen and to put all the effort into protecting an ego, because it does take protect. It does take power, the power of the mind. It it takes effort to protect the ego. But if we remove that protection, we have a lot. We have a lot, <laughs> and we have a lot of energy. We have a lot of love. This is good. Feel the goodness, you know, of choosing right mindedness. And we can't fake it. Right mindedness cannot be faked, you know. We're not here to present something to somebody else. We're here to feel it inside. We're not here to impress somebody else. Who would that be to impress if we're one? We watched another beautiful movie last night. So it was called Ordinary People. Ordinary People. So if anybody who wasn't here would like to watch a good movie, watch Ordinary People. It's touching. And it is, you know, ego versus right mindedness. You can see it in that movie. So it's beautiful. So does anyone need to lay anything on the altar after this? Something you would like to ex express, explore, Laurie? And then Jonas. And then you're okay. Morning. 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 We saw you, Jonas. Come to you after. Yeah. I when I got back last night, I invited Ava to talk about her relationship with her dad and her and I that relationship. Um, just her thoughts on the last two years. She and her childhood, like everything. Mm. And she brought up some memories. 
around like feeling shamed for having emotions. Some things that me and Gareth both did and it just brought up intense guilt and shame. I was also really grateful. But then in the night, there's lots of tears and praying. And it's still here and feeling. So I'm listening to you, yeah, what you've shared this morning. And there is like, I can feel there's some trust, you know, that this is just, it does feel like pain. And yeah, just praying for some self-forgiveness. Well, Joe also came and it was only brief, but there was an opening, you know. Yeah, so it's kind of like, not, I don't know, just it was intense and horrible. Yeah, but this is an opportunity to forgive yourself. You know, it is the past and it is really beautiful that they talk about it, you know. So now you can practice be this love that you fail to be in those moments that they're mentioning, you know. Yeah. But receiving it and be happy now, you know. Yeah, just watching all the moments when I went to defend, you know, and mm. yeah. But I didn't, but it kind of feels like, oh, <laughs> the fear is like, oh, now it's like, it, you know, and it's all going to be allowed. And there's some fear around that. Like, Yeah, that it doesn't mean that you cannot explain. You can explain without defend, but you can watch if when you explain something. If it feels helpful, only explain if it feels helpful, not from defending, of course, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I did try, yeah, I, there was a bit of that last night and it didn't seem to be heard. So it maybe it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't quite, there was doubt around that, you know. But I just didn't want to shut the conversation down with like, like in the film, like, she, you know, she doesn't hate you. Right. Yeah. I think I wanted to share now just to try and alleviate these feelings. Yeah, and there is no cause for guilt, Laurie. Guilt is never justified. No. These items that are mentioned, they're part of a dream. And as the dreamer, you can be a loving presence and clear. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, it was, yeah, I could see that faintly, you know, like actually this is what it's for. This is, this is, uh, yeah, but yeah, thank you. Man. <laughs> it's in process. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you may have said this to them, but to kind of have the bigger context that, you know, we're all trying to do the best we can, but there are times where we make mistakes. But that that's not something actually to feel bad about, you know. So to kind of put it in this bigger context for them. Yeah. I think is mm -hmm. good too. Yeah. Because they may remember times when they made mistakes. You know, if you can even bring bring in examples. Yeah, that feels good because I did like apologize. I said, you know, to that absolutely was not okay. What what happened? What she brought up. But yeah, just just add to that and say, you know, I made mistakes then and I will make mistakes now, probably, and I will go on to make mistakes. We make mistakes. It's yeah, and it's about forgiveness and loving each other and Yeah. Thank you.
yeah, don't make yourself like less less than glorious. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what comes up for me. It's the same feeling. It like there's a belief that others are more important, you know, that they what they want is more they're more entitled to happiness than, than but that's are. impossible. Yeah, that's what I want to question. Oh that yeah, it's my job to make everyone happy. It's the same. No. Not layers of the same stuff, but I do, yeah, there's a lot of hope there as well that it will be corrected. It's... Yeah, it's not your responsibility to make others happy. Accepting the atonement for yourself that makes the universe happy, you know, and that's all. And that is the, your gift, that's the offering. To everyone and everything. Yeah. I'm happy joining there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jonas. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Yeah, um, I've had a pretty challenging month and also with some temptation. Um, to distract in ways. Um, it seemed like I felt the guidance to play more guitar. And then as I was beginning, I was also beginning to look for like an amplifier so I can play. And I was kind of, my mind was getting busy into, you know, uh, what, what about this amplifier? And instead of praying in the train home, I was looking into stuff and and yeah, I just right now I feel some some guilt. And it was like the more I got into this idea, of like oh now now Holy Spirit has, has finally allowed me to become the musician that I wanted to be from the beginning. Now maybe I have the energy, and I'm going through this. To be honest, I always when I'm home I have this prompt just to rest. But it's like, I just, no, fuck that prompt to rest. I want to play guitar now. So it changed from being like something that was really fun and beautiful till something that kind of took me over that every moment I had, like if I woke up in the morning at five, I would go out and play guitar because oh, now I have the time. So it, it kind of has become a little bit of an obsession. Um, and then I began, I began to feel after some weeks that even though there was a joy, but there was also like, oh, I feel actually kind of attacked by the guitar. It's like my nervous system or my body is saying like, no, it's, it's not now. You need silence. You need, you need to take a break. You need to calm down. And then when I'm tired in my, in my work, I, I will have a, a coffee and a piece of cookie or something to get by so it's like the you know the the pride from the guitar and the pleasure from from going through these challenging for, for dealing with these challenging moments with stimulants and yeah for me I, I really have this hope and this feeling that I can put it down now these two things and and really come to a much more pure place mm. Mm. I think of the Sufi dancing, you know, they dance all the time. That's till dawn, you know. But it's to glory in the, for the glory of God. You know, it's for the joy of the spirit. And if that's what you feel with the guitar, you know, then that's beautiful. But if it becomes an addiction or an obsession, or an idol, you know, then that's not happy. It's it's it seems like it's both things. And it, it also seems like when I when I take the guitar up and I play it for example one hour, my mind is just elaborating on creative ideas all day and then next night I will only sleep five hours and then I'll wake up and my mind is just like 
like also in a beautiful way. Like when we are walking in a park, I can see how all the trees, all the colors are in my mind. So it's like, <laughs> it's, it has also been expanding. Yeah, that's what I feel. The spirit uses it too. Yeah. You know, it's a, a, it's, there is a gift, there is a drive in you. There's a gift that you can offer through the music. Mm. You don't have to push yourself. Mm. Maybe it's a, something about having like a very fixed routine in the morning. So, for example, so I don't go directly to the guitar. So I say, okay, every morning I have. You always no. want to make plans, Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> you always try to restrict and constrict the flow. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. If there was just one thing I could follow and then I knew I would get happy, I would do the same. I would do that every day. Yeah, follow joy. <laughs> That's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have this song by this beautiful singer Ramon York. He sings "Follow Love for where it for where it goes is a place with no return." Wow. Follow love, follow joy. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Love you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> I think I want to say something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we talk about uh, mistakes, make mistakes, and then brought the situation here. And yeah, I'm not going to say talk about the situation itself, but just to give them a context. We were doing something, then I made a mistake, but I didn't say that. He saw that I, I made a mistake, but I was trying to put my mind and, and the solution. I was like, well, how can we fix that? Because he started to complain. And then he said after, you made a mistake. It's okay to say I made a mistake, but I felt so fearful. And then I said, I felt angry. I said, Why do you wanna make me feel uh, wrong? My mind was like this, right? Like, why do you want me to say I made a mistake? And then it was, now I listen to you talk to Laurie. I just saw this confusion in my mind, like it it's, was pride or from me or what was that? Like why I have to say I made a mistake and then also that's no mistake, everything's for good. And all this confusion in my mind, just want to share that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe it was a failure to forgive yourself. Yeah. You want to kind of run it over instead quickly you know make sure you make it right okay so it can be yeah uh, say so, oops i made a mistake i'm beautiful <laughs> yeah it makes sense i can see that when i think about the situation and it's not real about what you say Sure, if you if you're with someone, if you're with Jonas and you you know you notice that he noticed and yeah, you can say it, but it's it's more what you say inside. Yeah, I, I see I was trying to cover up cover like yeah, yeah. Yeah, no 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 let's mm. let's yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But it's also not to have to pay for your sins, you know. There can be another trap. It's a trap to avoid or to try to cover it up, but it's another trap to be apologetic. Oh, I made a mistake. Now I will atone for my sins. <laughs> Neither of them. And Jesus says, do not see error. So that's for all of us to practice. To just be right-minded. And we don't perceive mistakes. Yeah. And can I say one more situation? Yeah. Um, 
is in my mind is also because uh, I know a guy, a man from the church when I was missionary, we were missionary together at the same time. And, and yesterday he just sent me a message that back then we were just friends. I don't, I have no memory, like look at him and feel attracted to him. And he never had said not, and nothing to me about my body or something like that. And yesterday he sent me a message like really with a different voice, you know, when he said, hey, Vanessa, and I just want to say, you know, you are my dream. This kind of, <laughs> I want to fuck you. And then, and then. <laughs> Mission, missionary. <laughs> And then I have this thought, like, oh, immediately I felt a kind of rejection, like, even because the voice, yeah, a lot of the voice, yes. But and then he was so, I, when I think about him, I think about his smile. He was so joyful as well in the church when he was a missionary, when we were dancing together, we had this group to dance for God, for Jesus. And I would, I think I would like to express this and say, hey, when I think about you, I think about your smile, I think about your joy. And I'm not I'm not interested about if you want to talk to me, of course we can talk, but not about sex. I'm not interested in that. But I I feel I didn't I don't wanna make him bad. Like, you know, I don't know exactly what to say, I don't make him guilt. You don't always have to answer everything that comes your way. You don't know what? You don't have to answer okay. everything that comes your way, you know, and if something like that comes from somebody, you can just release them and hand them over to the Holy Spirit. That's good. That's you don't have to make him wrong or right. You can just, yeah, delete the chat or something, you know, or just yeah, hand him over. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I feel good about that. Better. Thank you. Yeah. Release what doesn't serve. <laughs> gracias. Gracias. <laughs> gracias, gracias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cariño. <laughs> okay, anybody else? What's up? So, yeah. Um, you remember last time when I was with you, I I talked about my attachment to my daughter or my thoughts about my relationship with my daughter. And uh, it was so great because the very same evening, she was offered an apartment to move, uh, to move out. And I felt the whole thing, you know, get started. And I was like, all right, yeah, good timing. <laughs> good timing. And yeah. And it passed really quickly, actually. I could just, I walked around there and went to get a glass of water just to be with me, you know, not to, yeah, interfere with their thing. And yeah, it was such a good lesson, you know, to have it all on the same day there. So yeah, I felt like I could, uh, you know, become happy really quickly again. And it's such a <laughs> it's such a gift to to learn. So yeah, and then I wanted to bring up also the um, this feeling that I get about consistency and being kind to myself because I'm learning a lot of new things now. And the other day I had a little bit of a meltdown. <laughs> And I haven't had that in a long time. And I'm so,
I keep insisting that things should go faster than they do, but most importantly, I I become so it's I'm super excited, but then it also goes into this thing where I get like Jonas described, there's some sort of in it, you know, and I feel it when it's going into that. But then I'm so hard on myself. I'm so hard on myself for not being able to learn, you know, the first time or the second time or something. And so I could see it so clearly also because my daughter is trying to help me and teach me because she knows these things much more. And and she got this impatient towards me and I just exploded it with myself. So it's so... It's a lifelong pattern of just not... I, yeah, I, I don't wanna keep doing it. I destroy everything. I, I insist so much that I should be different, that I should know things, or that things should be somewhere where they're not, that I just, and then I give up, you know, the consistency that I just leave it then, because it, I, 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 it's unbearable with all these overwhelming feelings that I just, you know, when I had my breakdown here, <laughs> screw yeah. So yeah, I really want to hand that on. What is the thing? Why? I mean, I want to be kind to myself when I learn new things. I want to be loving to myself like I can be with her when she doesn't understand, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can um, cultivate the infinite patience. Stay Say them. Infinite patience. Yes. Because that's the state of mind, you know, it's very peaceful. And mm -hmm. and Jesus says it offers immediate results. You know, my entire life when things have gone too much for me or too hard or that I don't seem to be able to remember how to do Every time that happens for me in my life, I just, I become so overwhelmed and so angry that I completely just give up, completely. Yeah, so this is, this infinite patience will be very healing. Mm. Release that push, that, yeah, frustration. There's something more. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's something more. It's like a... There's an ingrained idea somewhere that I'm... Yeah, it's... I can't express it now, but it's something. But I'm not capable or stupid. I don't know, something. It's Mm -hmm. it's Good. making myself wrong for not learning fast enough making myself wrong for yeah just being me basically where I'm at yeah and maybe that you're in touch with that belief you can embrace that belief with infinite patience because it is just the belief yeah, really true. 
Yes. Yeah, thank you. And of course, it, in the moment when I'm doing it, it creates so many not nice feelings. <laughs> There's no doubt that, that when I'm in it, that I'm up to something very, that needs not be, or whatever the chapter was, this need not be. <laughs> Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because different people learn differently. And so just because maybe you don't receive that those things the same way someone else does, it's no cause for judgment. Yeah, I hear you, but I do judge myself. I didn't even continue school, you know, after nine years in Sweden, you're liberated from the school. You don't, you're not legally, you don't have to continue after nine years. And I just said, I'm not doing that anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm allowed to be me where I'm at, learning in my Yeah, I, I listen to, you know, sometimes there are those ads on YouTube before you, uh, most of the time there is an ad before you get yeah. to a YouTube video. And it was this, long ad it was like actually like 40 minutes long ad <laughs> <What day? laughs> and i listened to maybe 15 minutes of it and because it caught my attention because it was about a guy who when he was a kid he had an accident he hit his head and um, he just couldn't handle yeah. school yeah maybe you heard about him yeah Jim. He couldn't handle school, you know, and, and, uh, and every night he was reading about the X-Men under the sheets in his bed. <laughs> he was just yeah. reading cartoons about the X-Men because they had superpowers. Exactly. And he was just so drawn to that. And he, he developed this, they call it the super brain. And I watched him and he's very calm. Yeah. It's very calm and he's just, you know, maybe different. And this is the judgment of the world may say you have learning disability, but God doesn't care about that. God yeah. can use every mind. Yeah. And, and there are other ways, you know, to yeah. take it in and to extend yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel so beautiful now. I feel so much energy in my body, my legs, my hands. Ah. Oh. Yeah. I hear the word compassion, you know, this compassion, and that is that is a gift. Mm. And we don't judge as the world judges, so you don't have to buy into that. Mm. No, for sure. I mean, I had whatever they call HDHD is or was, and my daughter as well, and my son had version of it. But yeah, it's uh, my daughter has also changed so much. I mean, she has so, yeah, it's a long story, but she has really shifted out of so many reactions and habits and outbursts and she's like a different person now actually it's yeah yeah emotional intelligence yes intelligence yes. and so completely open yeah it's like 
I can, I can tell you so many beautiful things that she, I mean, it's completely heart warming and opening to hear her and to be with her. And the other day she even expressed a memory that came up for her, but when she hurt me, she physically actually hurt me because she has so much emotion going on herself. And she just took her nails and, and made a, I mean, I didn't have time to pull back. I didn't think she was going to hurt me. So, but she actually did hurt me. And, um, but she had the memory come up the other day. So she had tears and it was the first time she, you know, apologized really genuinely about what she did. And she was just so beautiful when she shared and, uh, we both like wow yeah it's oh and then I, I she asked me for forgiveness and I just sure it's already done honey and then she went on but I also reminded her asked her but have you forgiven yourself you know <laughs> when <then> she did <laughs> and it was so beautiful precious <laughs> very precious and for her to to feel it you know, to feel the regret and just bear that feeling and express it without feeling the negativity or the, you know, blame or well, that's a milestone for her. That's beautiful. Yeah. I thought about that story when Laurie shared. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asa. <laughs> yeah. It's the right use of the power of the mind, you know, forgiveness, like living in this forgiveness. That's superpower. Yeah. Giving us good true empathy. Instead of the X men, will be the F men. <laughs> and women, F women. <laughs> forgiveness, superpower. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we're meant to be in love. There's nowhere else we'll be at home. Can you say that again, Jenny? The whole thing? We're meant to be in love. There's nowhere else you'll be at home. Welcome home. <laughs> Step in into love. <laughs> it's a place where no one can be left out. No one. Impossible. Because if someone's left out, it's not love. You're not at home. A gift to give you some. Mm. <laughs> love and big hugs everyone <laughs> we'll do it right side, side up also. <laughs> oh love you guys yeah, so much love <laughs>